What is the right way to make porridge? This might be controversial, but I feel like we need to settle the debate. Milk or water? So if I'm honest, when I'm in a hurry, which is quite a lot of the time, I tend to make it with milk in the microwave, chuck in some raisins and then chuck on some honey as well. It works, but it's not traditional. You're sort of supposed to make it with water, but I have quite bad memories of lumpy porridge when I was a kid. But we're gonna do a bit of an experiment. Porridge three ways, then we're gonna subject it to a blind taste test by perhaps the harshest judge of all, Goldilocks. Porridge is popular throughout the world, but it's made using different things. In Scotland, it's all about the oats. You get rolled oats and you get pinhead or steel cut oats. And it's kind of down to preference which one you like. I like these because they have quite a nice kind of texture to them. I'm not being paid for this, by the way. <laughs> Recipe proportions will vary. So some recipes will say that you use 50 grams of porridge versus say 220 milliliters of water or maybe 40 and 200. In this case, I'm just using coffee cups. So it's kind of a proportion of one to five, two, three, four, five. So we've chucked all of that in a nice kind of high-sided pan. If you want to bring this to the boil, then turn it down and simmer for five to six minutes. And most important of all, stir. And for that, you're gonna need one of these. A while ago, I did a short on the village of Carr Bridge, and I mentioned that it's the home to the Golden Spurtle Award. And a lot of people wondered what the Golden Spurtle was. It's actually the prize in the World Porridge Making Championships, held there every year. This is a Spurtle. The idea is, it gets into all the corners and stops things getting lumpy. The stirring is kind of therapeutic, but you need to be careful. Legend has it that you have to stir clockwise, or the devil will get you. Obviously, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, remember to start anti-clockwise. Traditionalists say that you should add salt, which I never do, but on this occasion, we're gonna give it a liberal dose. Back in the day, some people would actually pour their porridge into a drawer, let it set, and then take it to work. A bit like a modern kind of porridge bar, I suppose, when you think about it. Everyone I know knows a story about some old man that they knew that poured porridge into a drawer. I'm slightly worried as I'm saying this that some hipster is going to be out there watching this and get an idea in their head. An authentic way to make porridge. Probably quite an authentic way to make your porridge dusty or your clothes porridgey. Oats were introduced to Scotland around about 600 AD but traces of barley porridge have been found in pots in the Outer Hebrides that date back 2,500 years. In 1775, Samuel Johnson wrote that oats were a grain which in England is generally given to horses, but in Scotland supports the people. People used to eat this as a meal up to three times a day. And we are pretty much done. Now all we have to do is leave it to stand for a minute or two just to let it set and dish it up for the boss. So we've got one version with milk, one version with a slightly posher version of milk, and one version with water and milk added afterwards. A little bit of milk. This is old school. This is how my granny used to make porridge. A bit of honey in this one. This is the milky one. And then, this is your posh porridge. I'll splash the old cream, double cream, heavy cream, I think, if you're in America. And then old school brown sugar. Obviously, you can chuck in blueberries, raspberries. I quite like raisins. Um, I've heard of people actually putting in chocolate and marmalade, which looks kind of amazing. The possibilities are pretty much endless. But these are the ones we're going with for uh, the judge. My favorite one is this one. Ah, she likes the posh porridge. 
The Oracle has spoken.